Hello boys and girls, Greg from the Scary Spirits here to make you another cocktail. Today's cocktail is the Santa Cocktail, which is the featured cocktail in today's episode. We're going to start with our shaker with ice. To that, we're going to add grenadine, two ounces. Two ounces grenadine. Need more grenadine. Next, vodka. Two ounces of vodka. Need more vodka. Cranberry juice. Four ounces. Sprite. Recipe calls for eight ounces. This can is seven and a half. Close enough. Then we Shake lightly. Woo. Carbonation makes it overflow, so you know. Next, we're going to take our glass, which we rimmed with corn syrup and sugar earlier. And we are going to strain our Santa cocktail into the glass. Garnish with a cherry, and there you have it, the Santa Cocktail. Sweet. Yeah, pretty good. But be careful shaking up that Sprite, boys and girls. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the podcast. See ya. You probably find out pretty early in life, whether you're a Moss Garcia or a Scotty Goodrich. In this week's episode of the Scary Spirits podcast, Christmas Evil, our Santa-obsessed neighbor puts one of these boys on the naughty list and one on the nice. Now, I'm not judging, but Greg seems mighty impressed with Moss, so you can probably figure out which list he's on. I myself, a surprise to no one, am a delightful Susie Lovett. Kind of makes me wonder, though, which list would you end up on? I mean, you do listen to the Scary Spirits podcast. Cheers. Welcome to the Scary Spirits podcast. Please be advised that the presenters may use adult language and or discuss adult situations. This podcast is not intended for younger listeners or those that may be easily offended. So, if you're ready... Let's go.
Hi, I'm Greg. Hey, I'm Karen. And welcome to the Scary Spirits Podcast, the podcast that combines the two very different yet highly compatible worlds of scary films and alcoholic spirits. What could possibly go wrong? Indeed. How are you, Karen? I'm doing great. How are you, Greg? I'm okay. Well, you're about to get into the Christmas (laughs) spirit, aren't you? (laughs) Yes. Yes, I am. (laughs) (laughs) Do you have all your Christmas shopping done now, Karen? It's only a week. You only got, hell, less than a week. I absolutely do. (laughs) Okay. Good for you. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to guess you don't from that attitude. I have a good start, Karen. I got a good start. (laughs) Hopefully shit arrives, you know, in time. in the I know that's always the thing. (laughs) Is it going to show up? Shopping and receiving are two different things nowadays. (laughs) Clicking buy now. Doesn't mean it's going to make it. I'm feeling pretty good, though, about most of it. So we'll see. Before we go any further, we have important news, don't we, Greg? Yes, we do, Karen. We have a big winner in our book giveaway. To refresh everyone's memory, we are giving away a copy of Rock Tales, an amped up spin on mixology by Kristen Kreft and Maya Banatuala, as well as a book about Krampus in the Old Dark Christmas by Al Reidenauer. And our winner, selected at random, Karen, was Mark Haas. Congratulations, Mark. Congratulations. <laughs> we'll be in touch. If we haven't already. <laughs> Let's remind everyone, if they haven't heard our most recent Wicked Ramblings, they should go and take a listen. Yeah, it came out Sunday. And it's all about tarot cards right Karen yes with the Reverend Francine Hayden we like her I do she she gave me a good reading I agree (laughs) so check it out all right Karen I believe this film was your choice was it was it not it was and what film have you chosen for us this evening Karen I have chosen the very festive film Christmas Evil. Christmas Evil. When was this released, Karen? I believe it was 1980. 1980, you say, Karen. You remember 1980? I do. (laughs) Good times. Getting there. (laughs) (laughs) I had good times, Nady. Well, I'm a slow learner. You were ahead of the game. I was young, but young and curious, Karen. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe a little more curious than I was. Especially in 1980. What made you choose this film, Karen? Any any reason? Other than it's the fucking Christmas spirit? <laughs> no, it's it's the holiday season. Here we go. So no other reason? Nope. Just because it's Christmas? Yep. It's Christmas time again. Do we have a cocktail, Karen? We do. And what would that be, Karen? It's called the Santa cocktail. And how would we make this concoction? The Santa cocktail is the perfect holiday drink for the season. I don't know about that. Greg. I don't know about all that. You're going to need two (laughs) ounces of grenadine, two ounces of vodka, half a cup of cranberry juice, one cup of Sprite, corn syrup, granulated sugar, and maraschino cherries. I kind of like my white or my caramel white Russian for the holidays. You can have more than one holiday drink. To make this lovely cocktail, you're going to start by rimming your glass, coat the rim in corn syrup, and then coat the corn syrup with granulated sugar. Yeah. It took me a minute to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. You're not a margarita drinker, I guess. Well, I mix the, well, first I mix the sugar with the, you know, the syrup and no, that ain't going to work. So you got to no. coat it first and then sprinkle the sugar on around the rim. But yeah, I figured it out. Well, or you could just I'm put the corn like syrup. In one flat plate and the sugar in another flat plate, and you roll the glass in the corn syrup and then See, roll it in the sugar. See, Karen, that's why you're a doctor. <laughs> no, no, I just drink margaritas. Okay, so pour in the grenadine, your favorite vodka, juice, and it says Sprite, but I would not, into a cocktail shaker that's filled with ice. Shake lightly, it says. Lightly. Yes. Very lightly if you put the Sprite in there. Yes. And if you didn't, shake away and strain (laughs) into the rimmed glass 
And after I did that, I added my Sprite and stirred it. And then I added a cherry to garnish. And then, of course, serve and enjoy. But if you want to be extra and you happen to have some white food coloring sitting around, which I did, color the corn syrup first before rimming to really make it pop. It does pop. (laughs) It does. I'm going to say it looks, like I said, eerily like the vampire drink we just had. But, hey, we're calling it Santa Claus. Well, it looks like the vampire drink with a snowy rim (laughs) if you use the white food coloring. Yes. Vampire drink in the Alps. All right. Should we give our listener time to make their own? Absolutely. Just be it only takes five with... minutes, Karen. Just five minutes. Pre- just, just five be minutes. Careful with that sprite. Be careful. I wouldn't do it. I did, and I shouldn't have. You regretted it. And if you want to see that hilarity, watch me on the YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good one. I may have even dressed for the occasion, Karen. Oh, nice. <laughs> Classing up the joint. Yep. All right. Go make your cocktail. Hold on. And we're back. Yes, we are. All right, Karen, might you have a brief synopsis for us? I do. Go on. Tell me a story, Karen, all about Christmas evil, which sounds intriguing to me. Christmas evil, comical, festive frights. A toy maker who revels in the Christmas spirit suffers a mental break when his work is met with hypocrisy and cynicism and goes on a yuletide killing spree. Eh, Spree's a strong word. So is comical. (laughs) Yeah, I agree. We'll get into it, but I didn't really see the humor unless I missed something. Where did you watch this, Karen? I watched it on Amazon Prime. Oh, you have the special, something special I don't. Well, it's a no, it's a free seven day trial. So I said, sure. And now I'm going (laughs) to cancel it. So I watched it on YouTube and it was also available on Tubi. I saw that. Apparently, you didn't have to sign up for anything. You just hit play on Tubi and it played. But I watched it on YouTube. And in the comments, people were talking about how it's a fun holiday movie. I read it's a cult classic and one of John Waters' favorite holiday movies. Yes, so did I, Karen. That's high praise, if you like John Waters. I guess. Didn't you hear the hairspray dude? <laughs> yeah, but he has a lot of other movies that are a lot weirder than hairspray. He was from Baltimore. So when I was, oh, okay, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I hope that's right. I know he was very popular there. All right, Karen, are you ready to get into it? Let's do it. All right, Christmas Evil from 1980. Film opens, and it says Christmas Eve, 1947. Yeah, we're looking at a house with Christmas lights on the windows, and we're hearing the Night Before Christmas poem by a narrator. It is rated R. Oh, I didn't see that because I watched it on YouTube, I guess. Any reason why it said rated R? Just rated R. Okay. We see a mom and her two sons watching Santa Claus as he comes down the chimney. They're watching from the stairs as he comes out and helps himself to the food on the silver serving set, Karen. Yes. It looks like he makes himself a a honey sandwich. Yeah. Something like that. I didn't know if it was honey or caviar or something. Looked kind of fancy because it was silver servings. That with I a, think it, like it a was urn, honey. a water urn, and everything. <laughs> like, all right. It wasn't plain old cookies like we used nope. to leave out. Cookies and milk. Nope. Santa eats and begins putting out the presents. And one of the kids laughs, and Santa sees them sitting on the stairs, and he puts his finger to his nose and winks. And we see the boys upstairs in their room later, I guess, arguing about whether or not it was dad in the Santa suit. Yeah. And one of the boys goes down. Harry decides to go downstairs. And mom and Santa are feeling frisky, Karen. Yes, they are. Right there in the living room. Right in front of the tree. Harry watches. He runs upstairs. Apparently he's traumatized by it. I guess. Harry runs upstairs and grabs the snow globe. 
You think he's in the attic? Yeah, I think so. He smashes it on the floor, grabs a piece of the broken glass, and cuts himself, Karen. Apparently in the hand. I thought he was going to cut his wrist. but he- So did I. I thought this is dark right off the bat. But no, <laughs> he just cuts his finger. And it's, I wrote, terrible blood. Not a good, good looking blood. But You're highly critical of blood, Karen. I've I am. It looked pretty good to me. Later it does, but this I thought was bad. But anyway. It looked like the right viscosity and everything. I guess the color seemed off. Thank you, Dr. Karen. <laughs> And then we have credits. After credits, we are in the present, it says, Karen. Yes, we are. The present, which apparently is 1980. We see a man in Santa pajamas. He wakes up and he begins to exercise. Well, he wakes up to a Christmas alarm. Yes. Puts on Christmas music. Walking in a winter wonderland, yes. And then does his morning calisthenics. And I wrote there's lots of Santa decorations in his home or apartment or wherever he dwells <laughs> there are many and he's in the bathroom shaving and he's putting on shaving cream and he's making a shaving cream beard karen yeah i was surprised he shaved i thought he would just grow his beard like santa but you're right he makes a beard like all kids used to when they were young out of shaving cream made a nice all fluffy kids beard. Did, you, did you do that karen well yeah okay <laughs> I wanted to see what I looked at like in menopause. It's pretty close. (laughs) Pretty close. And while he's doing it, he has a flashback to the scene we just saw for the most part, right? Well, he cuts himself with the razor. Then there's a flashback to him cutting his hand. Then we see him trying on a fat suit. Oh, is he getting his Santa? Yeah, he's got a pillow pretending he's Santa Claus. Next we see him. He looks like he's on the top of the apartment building and he's peeping, Karen. We have a peeper. (laughs) This is disturbing, actually. He's looking through the windows of an apartment building. It looks like across the way, and he's looking at all the little kids' bedrooms <laughs> through their windows. Yes. Did you identify with any one of these kids, Craig? <sighs> no, Karen. Why do you ask? No, just thought maybe. Because <laughs> Scotty's taking out the trash. I little did that. Su- little Susie is playing with her doll. I played with action figures. And then Moss Garcia. What's he doing, Greg? He's he's looking at a um a magazine for men, Karen. He's cutting out a naked woman from Penthouse magazine. <laughs> no, he just ruined that magazine. That's why I was like, what are you doing? Don't cut it. <laughs> what about what's on the other side? I Moss? know. See, he wasn't paying, he was not thinking ahead. He was not. But this upsets Harry a lot. Yeah, he he runs in and he's apparently he's got a big book of about good, all the children, good boys and girls and bad boys and girls. And he makes a note in the book of bad boys and girls that Moss has impure thoughts and negative body hygiene, Karen. Yes. I don't know how he knows that second part, but <laughs> which is this is just creepy again of how many children he's watching. Yeah, he does like the little girl a lot, Karen. I noticed. Susie, just a darling, he writes. And it's the first entry, I think. Well, under Susie's, yeah. Yes. And he completely forgot about Scotty working his butt off, taking out the trash, doesn't even get in the good book. What's the point? <laughs> you know, maybe he's seen Scotty take the trash out, you know, every week. Maybe. Every other Not day. just during yeah. Christmas season. Yeah. It's his chore. So then we cut to the Jolly Dream Toy Factory, Karen. Apparently, we're on an assembly line. People putting toys together. Yeah, and Harry's giving a speech about how nobody's interested in good toys anymore. Yeah, and we his co works. Cut co-work to the break calls. room, and Harry is like preaching to the co workers about yeah. toys. They're not interested. And he says, That's because you've never felt the thrill of making a good toy. And they're all eyeball rolling. They're not interested. But Frank comes in and he's looking for someone to work for him that evening because apparently his wife wants to go out of town or some shit early. Do you think Harry looks like an old Greg Brady? It was a little distracting to me. (laughs) He does. And no one takes Frank up on his offer. And he also says that he hates Christmas. Harry basically is someone who's bullied. They make fun of him and push him around because Frank takes his sandwich from him and just starts eating it. 
because he's hungry. So Harry's being pushed around at the factory. But he's their supervisor, apparently. He got something. promoted from the line. So sometimes when that happens, you don't see that person as your supervisor. But yeah, he was promoted. He's in an office now. And we see him working in his office and there's a big Santa poster behind him. Kind of an evil looking Santa too. <laughs> a little creepy. <laughs> and Frank calls Harry and talks him into taking his shift that evening. Basically bullies him into it. So the shift ends. Everyone, you know, stops what they're doing. The conveyor belt shut down. They leave and a new group of people come in and Harry joins them and they wait for the conveyor belt to start back up so they can all assemble the toys. Yeah, he's took the shift and he's doing what he knows how to do. Next, we see Harry leaving after the shift, walking home. He walks past the bar and looks in the window and he sees Frank. He's going to drink again. with his buddies. Yep. But he does see Frank. And Frank is talking to his buddies about how Harry's a schmuck and he got him to work for him overnight, even though they're not leaving till the morning. Frank ain't making any money in the bar, Karen. It's true. So whatever, Frank. So Harry goes home. He begins humming Santa Claus is coming to town. As he clutches a, a male doll, he pulls from a dollhouse and he's having a moment. He's Yeah, he's pretty angry. He's losing his shit a little bit, squishing the doll. Next we cut and we see Harry standing outside his old house, the same house we saw back in 1947. And he begins peeping again. <laughs> again, he's peeping. And we see a mom and a dad on a couch. First, he sees the dad playing with the two boys. And mom has to be the bad guy and tell him to go to bed, the two little boys. And then mom and dad have some playtime. On the couch. Yeah. And Harry has a flashback to what he saw with the mom and Santa. And then we cut to, I guess it's, I don't know, the next day or something. And Harry's watching the parade. Apparently it's a Thanksgiving Day parade. It is. And what's the balloon that you see on the TV? I just remember seeing the hands. Is it? Is it um, underdog? It was underdog. <laughs> but stop. So do you want to know when the Thanksgiving Day parade first took place? Oh, my God. I know you wanted I would to love know, to know that. <laughs> if only I'd have known this about a month ago, I could have quizzed all my in laws. That would have been fun. Yes. The parade first took place in 1924, tying it for the second oldest Thanksgiving Day parade in the United States with America's Thanksgiving parade in Detroit. Both parades are four years younger than the oldest parade, which takes place in any guess. The guesses? youngest parade or the oldest parade? Both of these parades are four years younger than yes. the oldest parade that yeah, takes that place back. in the oldest Thanksgiving Day parade. I'm going to say we're talking about the New York one. That was the one he's watching, right? That's yes. The one he's yes. Watching? That's the one we're talking about. Yeah. So I'm going to say the Boston one's oldest. Oh, that's a good guess, but it's Philly. And then what would you say is the average weight of a balloon in the Thanksgiving Day parade? The average weight of a balloon. In the Thanksgiving Day Parade. One cubic foot of gas at sea level can lift about 0.064 pounds of weight. Just one of the giant building-sized balloons can weigh about... I'm going to say a ton. 400 pounds. <laughs> and hold 12,000 cubic feet of helium. One last one. Okay. The heaviest balloon in the Thanksgiving Day Parade weighs 896 pounds. It's the heaviest known balloon in parade history. And it is the SpongeBob SquarePants and Gary Balloon. <laughs> so next Thanksgiving, while the parade is on and SpongeBob goes strolling by, Speaking of parade balloons, did you know? Yeah, I'll turn to no one because I'll be sitting by myself if I'm watching the parade. <laughs> you don't watch the parade? No. Maybe Harley will be there. I'll tell Harley. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe with your grandkids, you can act like you know things someday. Uh, I will have forgotten it by then, I am sure. <laughs> then we cut back to the old house. Mom and dad are still feeling... 
Yeah, they're still frisky. It's like the next day. Yeah, they still like each other. Go figure. I know. And mom asks dad not to upset Harry. And then I said, oh, that must be Harry's brother. <laughs> yeah, she says, promise me something. Don't be mean to Harry. But apparently he is mean to Harry. So Harry was peeping on his own brother and yeah. his wife. That's not weird at all. She says that Harry's a sweet man and you make him suffer for his mistakes. See, Harry's still watching the parade. He calls Phil and says that he will not be coming for Thanksgiving dinner. He says he has other plans. But he does say wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving for him. Phil Phil begins to get concerned as if he isn't already. And Harry is very intrigued by Santa arriving. He arrives at the end of the parade. Next, we see Harry trying on Santa wigs, a beard, and you know, hair in general, mustache, eyebrows. The whole shebang. He's got the whole package, Karen. And then we see him making a Santa suit. Yeah, he's sewing it himself. Next, we see him painting a sleigh on the side of his van, Karen. Yeah, while he's painting, he's going over the list of toys for the good girls and boys over in his head so he remembers. Yes. Yes, checking his list is what I have. Yep. Next we cut to, I guess, the next day or something. Harry's walking home from the store, it looks like, because he's got bags of groceries. And he talks to the kids across the street that he's been peeping. Mm-hmm. And they begin to talk about all what they wish for. Moss Garcia wishes he had a lifetime subscription to Penthouse Magazine, Karen. <laughs> yeah, Harry's not pleased by that. <laughs> yeah, he runs right up and makes a note in his list of bad boys and girls. But he's got a little picture of lovely Susie there. <laughs> and I'm like, this guy's a pedophile. This is weird. It's just weird. But he opens the book to his bad boys and he writes under Moss Garcia again, throws rocks at dogs, uses <laughs> profanity, picks his nose, impure thoughts. Ne- again, negative body hygiene. Next, we see him peeping again, Karen, that night, I think. Yep. He's watching Moss Garcia. Play with his toys as he watches TV. And he covers his face and hands with mud and marks the wall by the window where he's peeping. With his handprints and a kiss, it looks like. Moss's mother comes and they have to leave. Did you did you recognize Moss's mother, Karen? I did, but I couldn't place her. Who is it? It's Patricia Richardson. Oh, okay. Most most known for playing Tim the Toolman Taylor's wife on Home Improvement. Okay. I get her and the everyone loves Raymond wife. I can't remember what her name is mixed up. So they go to leave. Harry hides in the bushes, but Moss sees him. Moss tries to tell his mom, but his mom slaps him and tells him (laughs) to get in the car. (laughs) Her one night out and he's ruining it. Smacks him right across the face, throws him in the car and they leave. Next I have, we see Harry smelting. Is that what he's doing? Yes, he is. (laughs) And he looks like he's making a tin soldier. Is that what he's doing? Yeah, he looks like he's in some sort of workshop that he has. Like a shed, maybe? Yeah, it says garage or shed. because It's not his apartment. We see those creepy doll heads and parts of dolls a couple times. I guess he's making his own dolls in there. Cut to the Jolly Dream Toy Factory. Harry's at his locker, looking in the mirror, as you do. Yeah, and he does the Santa Claus finger on the nose and the wink. Apparently, it's the company Christmas party. And there's an old 19-inch TV there playing a video of the owner over and over again or something. (laughs) Saying that he will... And he's sitting somewhere tropical because there's palm trees around. Yes. He's not in (laughs) wherever they are because it's cold. New York, I I would assume. Yeah, he says he's going to donate toys to the Children's Hospital. The Willow Spring State Hospital. I think it's the mental hospital. Well, they they say they use the word retarded later. (laughs) Not politically correct today, I know, but that's what they say. But I think it's for emotionally disturbed because I'm having a feeling that maybe Harry spent some time there. You think? Mm. He seems awfully concerned that every child there is going to get a toy. So I don't know. It just seemed like maybe. I don't know. 
they have to keep up production, Karen. They have to produce more toys if they're going to give them away, right? Right. And the boss wants the workers to give money so that yes. they can donate more toys too. And we see Harry has a confrontation with one of the new management trainees. He kind of learns that they really don't know how many kids are in the hospital and this is just a big PR thing. And Well, he's disgusted that the factory isn't giving all the toys they need. And he says they're relying on the workers to chip in, which he knows they're not going to do. So it, it's a farce, basically. Like you said, it's a PR stunt. Next, we see Harry that night at the toy factory, and he's stealing a bunch of toys while everyone's having fun at the party. Yeah, things are getting crazy at the party. <laughs> Lots of alcohol and dancing. And Harry fills bags with dirt as well. Yeah, that was weird, but... And we get a shot of the New York City skyline, too. So, yeah, it's definitely in New York. Next, we see Harry gluing on a Santa beard. And I just wrote, he's a nut. <laughs> he's maniacally laughing. Because he very, can't pull off the beard. Yes. He's very happy with the strength of that spirit gum. Spirit gum. gum. Yes. <laughs> and we cut to the Rockefeller Center tree lighting and the rockets coming out. Whatever. Like I said, New York. Ice skating, yeah. Christmas Eve, Karen, comes across the screen. And I wrote Halloween music. Oh, okay. It sounds a lot like the theme to Halloween, the music they're playing. I think they kind of ripped off John Carpenter here. And we see Harry delivering gifts. And I think I said it's his brother's house. Christian I think it is too. Yeah. But he's leaving presents there. I guess maybe yes. the presents he made. And is he leaving liquor bottles? <laughs> I couldn't tell. No. Okay. No liquor bottles. I think it's his well-made toys he's leaving. Then we see him delivering a bag of dirt to Moss. Then Karen... He gets in his white Chevy van. With the sleigh on the side that he painted. Yes. Possibly, Karen, a 1979 white Chevy G10, Karen. Identical okay? almost to the van I drove in high school. <laughs> Remember they used to do painting those scenes on the side of vans <laughs> with wizards and stuff? Yes. Yes, I do, Karen. Did you have one of those? I did not. Oh. I did have like little, you know, porthole windows back in, you know, the back. And it was insulated and had paneling inside and, you know, there were a couple of beanbag chairs back there and, you know, li living a high life in the back of the Chevy van, the 1979 Chevy van. Any idea what one of those vans goes for brand new, Karen? In 1979? In 1979. I'm assuming was it's a 79. G was the paneling included, or did you have no, to install that? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah we didn't do that ourselves. Um, 4,995. That's not bad, Karen. The actual retail price is $5,312. That's not bad. I was close enough. That's not bad. That's pretty good. Uh, All right, Karen. You know what the next question is? <laughs> 2,895. That's your answer? Yeah. That's even that's even better, Karen. For the average. Average retail today, Karen, is two thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, I went over. You went yeah. over. <laughs> but still, it's pretty good. Not bad. Some of my better guesses. Is this your first time listening to the Scary Spirits podcast? Or maybe you're a regular listener, but missed a few along the way. No worries. Not only can you find every episode on our website, scaryspirits.com, but you'll also get to enjoy awesome show notes too. I just want to say we really appreciate your support. Now let's get back to the show. So we see Harry delivering the toys to the hospital. I think he's stolen some toys too. I think well, he, he stole took... a whole shitload from the toys well, factory, Karen. <laughs> I agree, but he, t I think he took some from people's houses too. It's possible. Because from his brother's house? Yeah. Like he took some, replaced them with his toys. Which you'd say when he gets to his brother's house and is delivering toys, he pulls out a big butcher knife. 
yes, to cut the do. twine he has the toys tied together with. And it's kind of a moment where, oh. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't kill his brother's family, but it kind of looks like that's going to happen for a minute. So he's delivering toys to the hospital. He's confronted by a security guard. Harry gives him a gift and wishes him a Merry Christmas. And he said, and the security guard says, who are these from? And he says, it's from people who don't realize how generous they could be. That's what makes me think he stole not only the ones from the factory, but from the house too. So everybody's happy. He's dropped off all these fantastic toys for all the kids. The staff is touched. Right. And Harry practices saying Merry Christmas because he realizes he's like, wait a minute, my, my delivery is all wrong. He's got one line. <laughs> Yeah, everyone's very pleased. They all come and carry all the gifts in for the kids. Yeah, it's a nice thing that he did. It was. It's Christmas Eve, so Santa's out delivering gifts. And we cut to Christmas Mass. Is that what they're doing, Karen? Is that what that is? Yes, because we didn't mention it, but when Harry was introduced to the new up-and-comer, the boss says that this new guy and his wife are going to spend the holiday with him on the island, and they want to do the whole shebang so they're going to go to mass and all that's midnight mass and then enjoy the holiday yeah because you don't enjoy midnight mass <laughs> well they aren't it doesn't look like no everybody's falling asleep a lot of people <laughs> go to midnight mass for show but i've been many times we used to go every christmas eve it wasn't called midnight mass karen but <laughs> well midnight mass is at like midnight I, well, I know, but we used to go to the Christmas Eve candlelight service, which usually started around like 10. No, this was at midnight. And it's yeah. a good hour long. It's not It's not a quick one. And Harry is there, I guess, to see the executives from his work. Yeah, he's waiting for the boss and the new, the new guy to come out of mass. But he's everyone leaves. For them. Yeah, everyone leaves the church and several people begin to tease him. Karen. He's waiting at the bottom of the steps as Mass is letting out. Yeah, and they're teasing him because he looks like Santa. He looks like a good Santa. I he mean, does. doesn't have the cheap beard and cheap suit. I mean, he's got a nice suit and the hair looks real and maybe yep. not the hair on his head, but the beard sure does. Yeah, the beard mustache look good. And he stabs one of them in the eye with his little tin soldier, Karen, with the long sword. <laughs> yes, they show that several times, but... One of the men who is teasing him gets a sword to the eyeball, a tiny tin soldier sword. Then he takes out a hatchet. Which we hadn't seen before. Had not. And whacks a couple other people in the head. Three down and dead. I think he wounds another. Yeah, because there were four. Two men, two women yeah. came up front to tease him. Then he drives away. Which... But he leaves, he leaves the murder weapons there, Karen. What's he thinking? <laughs> and he's driving around in a white van with a sleigh painted on the side. I mean, that's going to be noticeable. And you might as well write free candy on the side of it. <laughs> well, or it's me. <laughs> I'm the one you're looking for. So next we cut to some place called the Family and Friends Association. And they're having a Christmas party too, Karen. So what's he do? He peeps. <laughs> <laughs> and two men inside the party see harry peeping through the window and they bring him inside because you know they just think he's like a guy who does santa you know right i don't yeah. know then a bunch of kids run up and harry gives them all toys we have then we have a short scene of the police investigating the killings at the church where they all say they saw santa claus cut back to harry dancing with everyone at the party looks like they're doing a polka yeah, Honestly. it's like a polka band playing Christmas yeah, carols. It looks like they're dancing a, a polka. And at the end, Carrie says he's got to go. But he's dancing with the little girl first. Again, not really appropriate. But he dances with the grown but, women too. And yes. But he and tells he, all the children to be good. And if they don't, he will bring them something horrible, Karen. Yeah, that was a little weird. Even the parents laughs. there were. A little bit shocked, and then he laughs with his big belly, and everybody laughs, and they all drink a toast to Santa Claus. Harry leaves and goes to Frank's house. But wait, he gets in his van, 
And then he names all the reindeer as he drives away because he's cracking the whip. What you got? You got to try to name them. Me? Yep. There's eight, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Nine if you count Rudolph. Nine count but... Rudolph. Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, and Blitzen. Very nice. They were first introduced in A Visit from St. Nicholas, more commonly known as The Night Before, Before Christmas, Christmas, yes. In 1823. Which is also the where we kind of get the Santa image from, what he looks like and that and Coca-Cola, Karen. <laughs> and Donner and Blitzen were originally called Dunder and Blixum, which in Dutch means thunder and lightning. I'm impressed. I know my reindeer. Yes, you do. Karen, come on now. Harry goes to Frank's house, who's the dude that tricked him into taking his shift or whatever. Harry climbs up on the roof and tries to go down the chimney, Karen. Not a good idea. Nope. <laughs> kind of gets How does stuck. he know where all these people live? But whatever. Well, he does bring, he brings a he's, ladder. He's a supervisor there. He probably has access to the files, Karen. Or he's just a super peeper. But yeah, so he brings his own ladder, goes Same up difference. on the roof. <laughs> he's got his sack of toys up there and he's going to go down the chimney which he might it looks like he might have been able to do if he didn't have his fat suit on but he got stuck and he starts to panic but he pulled himself out yep so he goes back down and he sneaks in through a window a basement window yeah and I said this is why you need a dog right here and he leaves presents for all the kids and they come out and they see him right yeah, they do. And then they run out back to bed. And pretend to be asleep because he walks by them. Yep. But yeah, he leaves presents under the tree. Then Harry goes to Frank's bedroom and suffocates him with a bag of toys, Karen. Tries to. Frank struggles. And Frank recognizes him. He says, Harry. And then Harry puts the bag of toys over his head. And his wife, who is sleeping next to him, doesn't notice. No. He sleeps. Frank struggles, so Harry slits his throat with a Christmas tree star. <laughs> yeah, that didn't bleed enough. <laughs> no. And then his, you know, he falls on his wife and his wife wakes up and she Finally. silent screams, Karen. She was a deep sleeper, that one. So Frank runs out and he stops and smiles at the children as he is leaving. And then she begins screaming out loud and yeah, he runs away. In his van with a big sleigh on the side. Christmas Day, Karen. That's what it says on the screen, apparently. Bill's house. Yep. He thinks that something's wrong because Harry is not there. And we see a news bulletin on the TV about the previous night's murders. And Phil and his wife fight about Harry. She's she's much more sympathetic. Yes. Than Phil. He calls Harry an emotional cripple. Do you know what movie the kids are watching on TV? I do not. It's the March of the Wooden Soldiers, hmm. which is a Thanksgiving movie. Apparently it's a tradition, but it's not Thanksgiving that they're watching it. It's Christmas and it's a Laurel and Hardy movie from 1963. My dad loved Laurel and Hardy. They were a British American comedy duo act during the early classical Hollywood era of American cinema. They were in silent films and then transitioned into talkies. Stan but I've never Laurel. seen that movie. Stan I'm sorry. Laurel and Oliver Hardy, right? Yes, that's yes. correct. Sam, I'm full of information. Me too today, apparently. See Harry's toy factory, and he begins breaking the toys he believes to be subpar. Yeah, he hates that he's... Ranted against the cheap toys in the toy factory since the beginning of the movie. He starts up all the assembly lines and lets the toys all fall off at the end and break. <laughs> Cut to a police lineup. Men in Santa suits. Cheap Santa suits. Supposed to be funny. I don't know. That's the only part that was even mildly <laughs> amusing. Because one of the Santas is seven foot tall. I don't know yeah, if you and noticed they're making that. Him, they're making him repeat, Merry Christmas. May, say Merry Christmas. No, say it like you mean it. Come on. <laughs> you know. But they're asking the people from the church because everyone said Santa Claus was the killer. 
and they're making all of these Santas. They're rounding up any Santa they can find and asking. Even pulling each them away one. from they're doing stuff with kids and they're taking them away. Making them step forward and yell Merry Christmas. Yes. Yeah. And one of the men in that's I guess from the church says, No, no, we told you it was a brown fur suit. That trimmed yeah. in like brown fur, like rabbit fur or something, probably. Not the traditional white, Karen. So next we see Harry Colin Phil. And Harry keeps talking about this, you know, playing his tune thing. He learned how to play his tune. He mentions yeah, it, was, it earlier, too. I didn't understand what that was about. He tells Phil he's going to play his tune and he doesn't have to worry about him anymore. He will see. He's going to make everyone dance, Karen. And Phil has no idea what he's talking about. So Harry's driving in his van and he gets stuck in about five inches of snow, Karen. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if he has a destination at this point, but he gets stuck and he gets out and walks towards a house. With... I mean, five inches. It's like two inches. Yeah. Like, well, whatever. there could be ice under it. Karen, that's why when you have a 1979 Chevy van, <laughs> you put bags of sack Creek concrete back there in the back behind the rear wheels so you don't get stuck. Or you have kitty litter in it so you can put that down for traction. <laughs> Whatever works for you. Yes. Be prepared, though, people. Yes. He ends up on a street covered with Christmas decorations. Lots of blow mode Santas, I wrote, Karen. Yeah. Looks like. So he's walking around aimlessly looking at the Christmas decorations and lights. They and make crap. him happy. And children come and run up to him. Parents come around the corner and they realize that Harry is the Santa the police are looking for. Well, they're not sure, but they're pretty sure. Because his suit is covered in blood. Yes. <laughs> so that's probably a big hint. But the children protect him. Yes, they do. And one of the men pulls a switchblade, Karen. A stiletto. But the and kids the... still protect him. Yep. Children all huddle around Santa and protect him. And the little girl you know, tells her daddy, no, no. And somehow there's a struggle. And the little girl ends up with the switchblade and she gives it to Harry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The husband wa whacks his wife and she ends up on the ground, drops the knife, and the little girl grabs it. Now Santa is armed. Yes, and he runs away. Then we have kind of a montage, Karen. Angry mobs lighting torches, where knocking the, on doors. Where the freak are they getting torches? Getting everyone like, up. Let's go get Santa. <laughs> all, right. all of a sudden, they have torches. Mob mentality's taken over. They have torches. It's like Frankenstein. You know, I like this part a lot, actually. It's like he's misunderstood or something, just like Frankenstein. Frankenstein had killed a couple people, you know, just like Harry's were a little more deliberate. But you kind of feel bad for Harry. Yeah. Uh, Do you? I did. Something's <laughs> not right there. Well, that doesn't mean you. Well, I guess. Sympathetic, I guess. Anyway, but, yeah. But they, the angry townsfolk, aren't going to let Harry out of the neighborhood, Karen. No, they're not. And they've all got torches and they're all running as one group, like how four-year-olds play soccer. They all run after the ball. Why don't you spread out? And I Why? like this part because a lot of it is when the angry mob is running, you don't see the angry mob. It's all dark except for the torches. I like yes. that. That's kind of neat. Yeah, that was pretty cool. But Harry does make his way to his white Chevy van, Karen. That's so stuck I'm in thinking, the snow. Yeah. And he left the lights on. Yep. So the battery might be dead. Lord, I know with how that works <laughs> in your white Chevy van. But Harry starts the car and does manage to free the van from the snow, and he drives away. He goes to his brother Phil's house. Phil confronts Harry, and then Harry blames Phil because Phil didn't, never believed in Santa Claus. Well, and Phil says, I knew it was you when he was one. Yes. He, he just says, I knew it was you. How many people have you killed? And the kids are like, don't hurt Uncle Harry. And then Phil begins to strangle Harry. And Harry it looks like he kills him. Well, yeah, it does. But he's just unconscious. Because <laughs> Phil has to drag him outside. Which I don't understand this part at all. Well, I thought he thought he killed him, I think. So why is he going to drag him outside and he puts him in the passenger seat of the van? I don't know. Maybe he's going to try to make it look like he killed himself or something. But he's going to have marks around his neck where he was strangled. True. 
I guess he could like run a hose from the muffler to the or interior. Put him out for the mob to get, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't see the plan here either, but the wife and the kids both see him do this, by the way. But as Harry is sitting in the front seat of the van there, he regains consciousness and punches Phil and drives off. He gives him a good clock. Well, that's kind of awkward for me. Because he uses his left hand. It's weird. But anyway, he drives away. The angry mob with their torches block his way. He swerves to avoid them. And he goes off a bridge, Karen. Well, through a fence is all I saw. Yeah. In slow-mo. And then the van flies to the moon, Karen. <laughs> yes, it does. And then we hear, and I heard him explain. Flame as he flew out of sight. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Credits. We hear some yeah. bells. Yeah. All right, Karen. Anything you really enjoyed or were pleasantly surprised by in this holiday comical horror film? Well, first, I, w- I want to say in my defense, I did expect it to be funny. <laughs> I did too. And it was not. Like a, it was sad. The whole thing was just yep. sad. It was mental it was illness. It wasn't. I can't even funny. imagine it being funny to me in 1980. I can't either. There's nothing funny about it, except maybe <laughs> the seven foot Santa, but and who was skinny and tall, like a basketball Unless I player. like smoked a bunch of reefer before I went in or something. I mean, everything's funny, but well, <laughs> maybe I don't know. I guess I also expected it to be kind of a slasher film, which it was. I did too. So I kind of liked that about it. Nothing really stood out to me. The ending was weird. The The whole story was sad. I just, I didn't hate it, but I didn't really enjoy anything about it. I didn't either. And it was slow. It was slow. It was a lot of buildup. We get it. He likes Santa. You know, <laughs> we get it. But my my favorite part was what I said about the tor- part with the yeah. torches. That was my yeah. favorite part. <laughs> There's not much to it, you know? Are we done with what we liked about it, Karen? <laughs> yeah, there wasn't. A, I mean, I guess you could say he was a good actor. Oh, in that, he was good. Yeah, he was a good You know, actor. that you believed that he was disturbed. And, you know, I thought he was a lot better than his brother. I thought his brother wasn't that good of an actor, but... The main character, I'm sorry, I can't remember who it was. I would say he was very good in the role. Yes, that would be Brandon Maggart. It was an odd script, but I thought he was good in it. He was born December 12th, Karen. Ooh. He's been in a few films. He was in The World According to Garp. Ooh, he was in Dress to Kale, Karen. He definitely shined a little bit better than most of the other people in it. Which we may get to. At some point. Yeah, it was good. Are we done with what we liked? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> All right. Karen, what what did you not enjoy or hate about this film? What were you very disappointed in? Well, I was prepared for something so different, completely different. So I don't know if that played into why I was disappointed in it, because the way it was advertised was a slasher kind of comedy, and it's not either of those things. So it is not. I kept waiting patiently for that to happen and none of it did. So that Mm. was disappointing, but the ending was bizarre. I I don't really know what that meant. I think the overall script and I can't imagine in the eighties, it was okay to be a peeper, but I mean, the man peeped everywhere (laughs) (laughs) and it was a little weird with the kids It gave you pedophile vibes and I was uncomfortable for a lot of it. And I don't know if it just aged poorly or it was terrible like that to begin with, you know, but I was definitely uncomfortable with most of the situations. I mean, his Santa suit was cool. I guess I should have mentioned that and what I liked, but, and he looked good as Santa. He was a good looking Santa. He didn't look cheap or you know unconvincing so he was convincing santa but the whole thing made me uncomfortable what about you it was slow it was too slow for me was i'm not even sure it's a i'm not even i'm not even sure it's a horror film well he kills a couple people yeah but it's more it's almost 
I don't know. It's kind of artsy to me. Even I'm reading like the critics at the time, like the people who liked it were like, oh, it's like, you know, it's you know, about personal morality and the mental illness is what it's children about. and the mentally ill and those yes. that don't fit in. And yes, that's what I, yes. Like I said, like Frankenstein misunderstood and you know not all his fault he was traumatized so i don't know definitely a study in mental health it's funny today karen one of my someone i follow on i think instagram posted this film today that that this was they're doing like you know a horror film a day for christmas and this was their film for today and i've read other things online where people enjoy it and it's like an annual thing for them and it's I don't know. I think think there are much better Christmas horror films than this to watch. I would much rather watch a Christmas horror story, which has a lot of the same themes to it, right? The one we did last year. Yes. Right? A lot of the same themes, but it's... Well, it's it's a little quicker and it's a little... Yeah. So maybe this is too artsy. Maybe it's too slow in the development of the characters in the first 10 minutes you and i are like we get it you know yes, yes. and it went on for almost an hour making sure we knew how much he liked santa and that he was traumatized <laughs> you know and that we didn't need all the peeping and everything we get it he thought he was santa it didn't need to go more than 15 minutes of that which in last year's movie was probably about all the character development we got. (laughs) So I can see how it would appeal to some people. I think we expected something so different. I expected more of a Christmas horror story, right? Something with comic, you know, because it's got William Shatner providing comic, you know, stuff and there are funny parts in it. You know what I mean? And, but no, this had, this had nothing funny in it. I don't So Not at all. It was, (laughs) a little traumatizing to watch it. Actually, (laughs) I I tend to be empathetic and I really felt bad for him that everywhere he turned, even even I did Karen, (laughs) his life was not great. You know, his home life, his work life, everything was just kind (laughs) of not good for him for reasons outside of his control. He kept trying to be the happy Santa and he just couldn't be successful. And then he snapped. It's a tragedy, Karen. That's what it is. Kind of, yeah. So, I don't know. All right. What kind of cocktail rating you want to give it, Karen? Well, I think- Which is an odd question, because it depends on how you want to rate it, right? Well, it depends, yeah, on whether you know what to expect or not. So- As a horror film- I'd give it a four. Right. But as a a drama- And a commentary on society? Yeah. I'd give it a- almost a two in that respect. So we could average them and say three, or you can go with four because I think that's what we would give it as a horror film. As a horror film, it's a four and that's what I'm going to give it. But I think it's an interesting commentary beyond the boss at the toy factory. There wasn't a lot of greed. There wasn't, you know, the kids weren't getting excessive amounts of toys. You know, the families were respectful of each other. There's lots of toys under all them trees, Karen. Well, yeah, it's true, but I mean, you're than... from a big family, so maybe I told that's, you maybe that's the no. usual for you all. But no, my mom put about four <laughs> gifts into trash bags. I told you she didn't wrap them. It's too much work. True, we each got I a remember. trash bag with our name on it, which I think is genius. <laughs> <laughs> she tied a ribbon on the top of the trash bag. You found the one with your name on it. You didn't unwrap anything. You opened up the trash bag. <laughs> And it had all your gifts in it. Genius. All right. I'm giving this officially four cocktails. Comments on the Santa cocktail, Karen? Anything? I think it's good. I think we've had a lot. It looks good. Especially if you have the white food coloring, I'll say. And if I was a little better about ringing it, I think you could make it shinier with the sugar. You could put a little belt around the glass if you were having a party and it would look really cute. Yeah. (laughs) But it's very similar to many drinks that we've had. But I like it because it has a lot of mixer in it. So you know I'm going to like it. Mine is evaporated. But luckily I have some more in the shaker. (laughs) 
I think I like honey to rim it better than I like corn syrup. I used simple syrup. To rim oh, mine. That's, that might work better too. Is it thick enough? Yep. The corn syrup is a little. It does make for sticky fingers, Karen. It does. All these, <laughs> all the rimmed drinks do. So, I mean, the simple syrup may run down more than like a thicker one though, but oh, whatever. Pro- probably. Just keep licking your fingers. It'll be fine. <laughs> or, you know, if you drink enough of them, somebody else might lick your fingers for you. <laughs> well, if they drink have... enough of them, Karen, if they drink enough. Well, yes. Everybody <laughs> needs to drink enough of them and have permission. Yeah. Just don't go up and, you know, stick another person's finger in your mouth without. Or the permission. other way around. Yes. You need permission from all parties. All righty. Anything we learned today, Karen? Other oh, than lots. to res- respect other people's <laughs> finger <Space>. licking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we learned about the Thanksgiving Day Parade, the floats, that you can name all the reindeer. A little yes, bit about I can. Laurel and Hardy, SpongeBob. 1979 Chevy G10 vans. White ones. <laughs> Anything else? I don't think so. It seemed like a lot. A lot about the parade. All right. Next film, Karen. That would be yours, Greg. What do you got? (laughs) That would be me, Karen. Our next film is going to be the film Sleigh Bells. You want to spell that for everyone? S-L-A-Y Sleigh (laughs) B-E-L-L-E-S Bells. Is this a sorority thing? (laughs) Bells. From 2018, Karen. It's a Christmas movie. I'm mm-hmm. trying to get into Christmas, even though this is after it comes out after Christmas. You know, I'm trying to keep with your Christmas theme that you've started. Do you have a drink to go with it? Yes, I do. <laughs> Excellent. What is that? The drink we are going to have is called the Cranberry Kringle Cocktail. Wait, does it have vodka, cranberry, grenadine? No, it does not care. Okay. What do you got? So we're going to need cranberry juice cocktail, peach schnapps, and vodka, and ice. So how do you make this lovely cocktail? So we're going to need three ounces cranberry juice cocktail, one ounce peach schnapps, one ounce vodka. Throw that all in a cocktail shaker, shake and serve. Okay. (laughs) Sounds tasty. There you go. Cranberry Kringle cocktail. Nice. All right. Anyone you need to thank this week, Karen? I'd like to thank our listener. There's a lot of podcasts out there. Thanks for spending time with us. Yes, thank you. I need to thank the band Verse 13 once again, Karen, for providing all the music in the Scary Spears podcast. The music does make the podcast better. It does. And once again, congratulations to our big winner of our books. Everyone's a winner who listens to the Scary Spears podcast. True. And we hope everyone has a very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Anything else, Karen? And please drink responsibly. I suppose. Thanks so much for listening. Want to keep in touch? Check out our website, scaryspirits.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Scary Spirits Podcast. Find us on YouTube at Scary Spirits Podcast. If you have questions or comments, you can email us at info at scaryspirits.com. To help us grow the podcast, you can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. You know, we really do appreciate your support. And as always, please drink responsibly. (laughs) 